This is Nerd World Problems. Things that matter to awesome people. Mind Warp. This segment of the story does a wise thing and capitalises on one of the most universally well-received aspects of Season 22, which is Syl. Vengeance on Varus featured enough hints about Syl's background that could warrant further exploration. Exploration, yes, but perhaps not the story to justify it. The business dealings of the mentors take something of a back seat. They don't really have a plan and they're not really the driving force behind the events. Instead, events focus on Syl's superior, Kiv, who is seeking a solution to his brain becoming too large for his head. Okay. A story could have been constructed around the mentors dealings that writer Philip Martin could have written a really interesting script around. And that kind of thing actually formed the basis of Philip Martin's unused script, Mission to Magnus, which was planned for production before being dropped after the hiatus and Trial of a Time Lord was put into production. And I can also understand the production team being concerned about the kiddies finding business dealings boring. We don't want Phantom Menace Syndrome. As it is, the fact the story features Syl and the Mentors is purely incidental, and they could have been replaced by any other creature, really. But at least it builds upon established and recent continuity and treats us to a second outing for Nabil Shaban as Syl. While Shaban does really well with the material he has, the writing for Syl this time isn't quite as strong. In Varos, Syl was a scheming slimeball trader with delusions of grandeur and a real villain of the piece. In Mind Warp, he's a snivelling, weasley sycophant, brown-nosing Kiv at every opportunity. He's in a position of weakness here. I understand this to show how spineless he is, but with nothing to contrast against in this story, he just doesn't come across as strongly. If anything, his boot licking, or tail licking, or sting licking, no, this is weird, of Kiv makes me question his sexuality. Although it's unclear if Syl has a gender or not, and if so, what gender he, she, or it is, there's definitely a Mr. Burns and Smithers vibe going on. Who knows if this was intentional, but it does make me feel that one of the strongest characters from the previous year has been wheeled out and teamed up for comedic effect, rather than a credible threat. It's fair to say that this story is a lot lighter in areas than its predecessor, lacking perhaps some of the finer detail and sophistication. It's hard to really say what this script is about, other than defying nature to overcome adversity and prolong one's life. Although writing that down, it actually seems pretty strong. But there is little more to it than that, other than a world full of morally dubious characters. Whilst it's probably the closest in tone to the previous season, this is the more traditional Doctor Who that fans were used to. Although more compelling and less campy than The Mysterious Planet, and less of a train wreck than Time Lash. This is all well and good and packs a few surprises and good moments, but it doesn't really challenge the audience, which suggests a misunderstanding of the criticisms that the BBC levelled at it the previous season, that being the violence and tone. This seems to have been interpreted as diluting the drama, being a lot less on the nose and as a result a lot more vague, putting the stronger stuff on the back seat and bringing monsters, heroics and humour to the fore. That said, Mind Warp is probably the best written of the season, as it should be, as it was written by Philip Martin, the best thing to happen to Doctor Who since... the last best thing to happen to Doctor Who. But his script does feel neutered by this new approach. Anything approaching risky territory seems to back away nervously and cover it in a veil of vagueness. However, the series hasn't entirely lost its ability to surprise, as the story is best remembered for the death of Perry, who, as it turns out, has the perfect head to house Kiv's brain. The climactic scenes are well shot and Nicola Bryant gives a brilliant performance, aided by the sudden shock of seeing her bald, which is alarmingly well done. Is it a good send-off for Perry though? No, because there's been no thematic lead-up for this. This is the second story in the season after 18 months off air. Mysterious Planet saw the Doctor and Perry's relationship changed, mostly for the better, or at least better to watch. However, for most of Mind Warp, not only are they separated, but the Doctor is disorientated and behaving out of character, and then is removed from the story altogether by the Time Lords, which leads to Perry's death. So there is no closure on that relationship, which it really needed having experienced one of the most challenging Doctor-Companion dynamics in the series' history. We're deprived of the appropriate payoff. We get to see the Doctor's reaction to events playing out, and we see just how deeply he cared about Perry in that reaction. 
He vows to get to the bottom of things, but then his grieving takes place off screen and it's business as usual next week, which again feels like the series holding back. This is as unfortunate for Perry as it is for the Doctor, as it's so sudden it doesn't build up much in the way of tension. In one scene, Perry is gagged and having her hair shaved off. Not much Perry can do there. In the next scene, it's all too late and she's gone. So Perry is lost before the actual drama kicks in. I praise the production team for trying to inject some drama into the series and adding some lasting consequences, but they sacrificed a long-running character to do it. I am left wondering whether the death of Perry was a well-founded artistic choice or a hastily assembled Adric 2.0. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt here and opt for the former, but what would audiences have thought at the time? The only people that really would have found this truly affecting would have been the long-term fans who had followed the Doctor and Perry's relationship up to this point. The casual viewer may have found this all a bit confusing, especially given that the series had returned from 18 months off-air only a matter of weeks ago, not to mention surreal as you've got a doolally doctor acting out of character who gets abducted by his own people for trial, which started seven weeks earlier by the way, and keeps intercutting into the action, and the unlikeliest romance between Perry and King Yukarnos. When I say King Yukarnos is played by Brian Blessed, whose best friend is a dogman named Dorf, you can see why a casual and indeed sceptical audience may struggle to be convinced. Add to this the fact that Mind Warp is sadly the least reliable count in the trial due to Time Lord interference, as I will cover later. Things become even more convoluted and it makes us question just how much of this story should we take account of and how much should be taken with a pinch of salt. Even Colin Baker himself has confessed his confusion about how to play it at the time because no one really knew. He had to make his own conscious acting decision about how, why and what was happening because at that point nobody else knew. And he opted for The Matrix Was Lying, therefore a big pinch of salt is definitely required. How much more effective would it have been if Mind Warp had been the first episode of the season to go out, Perry killed at the end of it, and then we pull out at the end to show that the Doctor's been watching everything unfold on the Matrix screen, and that he's on trial. That would have been a great lead-in to the Trial of the Time Lord story, and really establishing this new approach for Doctor Who. Yet Mind Warp still stands as probably the strongest instalment of the season, although there are a few noticeable flaws, many of them wide-reaching and affecting other areas of the season, there is a lot of frustrated potential as well. I hope you've enjoyed this episode-by-episode episode analysis of The Sixth Doctor. Please let me know your thoughts about the character in the comment section below, and if you want to see more videos like this. In the meantime, please check out my blog, Nerd World Problems, at drtripod.wordpress.com, where you can find typed-up versions of each of these episodes. 